So let's see the interface for Toonly. It's quite easy to follow. Once you open the program, you'll be able to see exactly this screen. Here on the left hand side on the top, you have view, edit and info. When you go to about Toonly, you can see exactly what version you are running on. Uh, I'm running on 1.3.9 is the latest one that they released. Here in the edit, you have undo, redo, cut, cut, copy, paste, and select all. If you select all, actually will not really happens because this is related to the other screen. On the right hand side, on the bottom, we have the Tuni toolbox. So you'll see exactly what edition you have. If you have Tunley Standard or Enterprise, if you opt in to pay for the Elite Masterclass, if you own Doodly, and now later we have Woomly. And this is actually something quite nice and quite interactive. I like it a lot. On the upper part, you have a search box. This refers to finding your projects. Uh, as you can see, I cleaned up a little bit here, but normally you can have up to 20, 30 projects, especially if you work with customers. On the left hand side, you have your projects with their names, uh, the number of scenes in each project and how long that project it is, when it was created for the first time, and you have a few actions. The first one is edit movie, and that will take you to that uh, particular project. The other one is duplicate and that will duplicate the entire uh, project itself or delete. Uh, I will delete this one, for example. So it's very easy. You click it, confirm and it's deleted. Uh, I have another one here that I want to delete is this one that's zero seconds. So we'll delete this one as well. But this one that I have four scenes for it, I want actually to duplicate. So I'll click duplicate. I'll say project duplicate and click duplicate. Now I have the same project as I had before uh, doubled. And a lot of people actually, I notice ask if you can do that. So yes, you can do that from this main screen. If you go to edit movie, you'll be loading that movie and you'll have everything that you had before so you can play around. We'll come back to this later on. So those are the action that you can actually take from here. Each one of those suitcases represent the four software that are available for you to purchase. If you want to learn more about one of those, you just click on learn more. It will open directly and it will give you an option to sign on. Vumli again, it's a video collaboration system that actually permits you to ask questions during your video. I highly recommend this one and I'll try to put the link in for you. Uh, the other one that we have here, it's Doodly. If you haven't heard about Doodly, it's an amazing software, very similar to Toonly. However, the best part about this one is that it you have a hand that draws everything so it will draw this guy and it will color him inside and it's it's really amazing it, it's worth checking it out if you didn't have this last one that i want to mention of course is the Toonly elite master class it's quite similar to what we are doing uh, for you for free uh, you have a certain amount of courses done by pamela dimic and you can find those all in here there are six modules in total and they cover all sorts of things from cinematics, working with text, character and some objects. Most of those you'll find in our channel as well. Very soon they'll all be released. So that's it for the main screen once you open it. Next, we're going to cover the inside of the software. So stick around. So let's start the project in order to learn the basic of Toonly. First of all, we'll, create, we'll click on create new video. And we'll call it basic training and click enter. That will create our project. We have on the left hand side a few buttons here. So let's start with scenes. Scenes are pre made animation that are already uploaded. I usually do not use scenes uh, 
they're not very useful, especially if you're working on a project. However, they can give you a good idea of what you're doing in the future. So first, let's bring, I'll just pick a random one here, office work. A scene will contain a background and a few objects or a few characters. Let's play this and you can see the full animation. It didn't load yet. Let's wait for it to load. You can see the uploading process here. Now it's loaded. With these buttons, I can go to the beginning or the end of the animation. So that's the beginning, that's the end. Let's see. So go to the beginning, play. We have each character doing something else and it disappears at the end. So that's a scene. You can play with it, uh, you can change it a little bit. However, it's quite rigid from this point of view. So I do recommend you to start from scratch always. It's good at the beginning to start with the scene because it gives you an idea of how to arrange things and how to do certain things. But in my opinion, it's just for training purposes, definitely not to use in projects. I'll just remove this scene quickly and we'll start from blank again. I'll click on undo button and the scene will disappear. This red line, it's our play line. And you have here your timeline. It's in seconds. You have your camera, your scene, your music, and the default uh, voice. This is used for lip sync or for voice in general. But you can use this for lip sync and only for uh, with characters that can do lip sync. Backgrounds. It can be a personal background that you upload yourself or a background that's already made for you. So we'll take an airport waiting room. You have a long list depending on your edition enterprise or standard you'll have more backgrounds or less backgrounds keep in mind with the backgrounds you can actually upload your own backgrounds just by clicking upload new object and picking an image uh, that you want to use for your background just trying to see if i i have here images so let's say i want this one it will Give me the chance to rename it, save and upload. It's saving quite fast usually. You can upload JPEGs, you can upload PNGs. Uh, we'll check in a second if you can also upload for the background uh, GIF files. <clears throat> you can click here, upload in the background, and you can continue your work while that's uploading. Once it will be uploaded, you'll be able to see it in the panel here. Usually everything that you upload will show up at the top. As you can notice, the first five images, uh, they are my own images. Uh, you notice just now it refreshed and you can see the public speaking room here. So if I'll bring it in, just wait for it to load. And you have this image. So you can use it uh, as a background as well. <clears throat> That's about for, for backgrounds. You can add more backgrounds one after the other. You just need to move the time. This one is at one second. So I'll put the, the play button, the, timeline at one second and we'll take uh, a train you just click on it and drag it to the screen and here it is now if we'll play this you'll notice that it goes from one background to another there is no fading effects no nothing but we can add those by right clicking on it so on those you have stick to the end and that's about it um, there is nothing else that you can actually do to those because they are custom both of them have been custom now, if you use one of the scenes that's provided by Toonly, usually you'll get a few more things. You'll have a background setting, entrance, exit, and stick to the end. So when it's your own, you'll have only stick to the end. When it's something that's made by Toonly, you'll have uh, two more options, entrance and exit. Let's see if we can upload the GIF background. Some people say it's possible. Some people say it's don't. I never tried it, but I will try it now. So as you can notice, there is no files available here. I have only images to choose from. If you'll go, if I'll go to my folder, you'll notice that I have a MP4 and a GIF in this particular folder. So obviously, as a background, you cannot upload the GIF file. That means you cannot upload the moving image. It has to be a static image. We'll cancel that and I'll minimize this screen. And we'll move to characters. I'll keep this. Uh, background here. Characters, very easy to add. You have a list of characters. You can also search for them, similar to backgrounds as well. You cannot upload a personalized character here, 
However, there are ways to go around that and you can upload it as an object. However, they will not have the options that those characters in this list actually have. Let's take this lady here. She's a bride. And I'll just make her a little bit bigger and bring her in the front here. Now you notice that this, this new line appeared in the scene and that's her. It says idle. That means that she doesn't do anything. She just pops in there. Just remove this part as well because I just want one scene. Now you notice that she just pops in, like bounces in and out. In order to get rid of that effect, if you right click on idle, you'll have here in effect and out effect. Just change this to whatever you prefer. You have four options, instant, bounce, grow and fade. Those are the options. Try each one of them and see what they do. I prefer the instant. That means that she's just showing up with the image from the beginning till the end. Also, if we click the, this small plus button, you can add animation settings. So let's say I want her to be dancing. Yeah. Now, once it gets to her, you can see her dance. Uh, what I like about this particular character, it has that uh, the veil is semi-transparent and I love that. Uh, there are people that can actually help you with characters if you want one to be done and they can be made as gift with uh, semi-transparent backgrounds. So she dances. Of course, you can right click even on needle and change the type. The type actually indicates to you uh, what she's going to do. Let's make her work. And if we click play, she sits down and she works. She's not happy. And obviously, I would not be happy either if I had to work. Uh, interpolation, if we'll change that to stretch, you can actually adjust the timing or the speed of uh, the action that she does. In some cases, you'll also notice that uh, some characters will have also moods. So let me remove her. I'll just click on her. She gets highlighted and I'll delete her. So as you can see, it's very easy to add characters, to remove them, to adjust them. To adjust the size of the character, you have this little blue uh, square with an arrow and you can just increase it or decrease it. You can see I can put him here in the corner. He was a bad naughty boy and we'll make him sitting there angry. You'll see they're very, very angry and he'll be instant, instant save. He's upset that the teacher just ignores him. Yeah, he's very, very angry. And so on. Now, if you want to make a character move across the screen, let's say that he want, we want him to walk. Walk it's, uh, walking, it's one of those actions that requires the character to move around the screen. You have those small dots at the beginning and the end. Those are keyframes. So we'll put it here. We'll click on the dot. Just adjust it a little bit. And then I'll go to the end. And I'll move it up here. And we'll make it a little bit smaller. Go to the beginning. Once I'll click, you'll see how he does the moonwalk. And he walks across uh, people. It's not the best path that I could get. Uh, those need adjustments, of course, and you might need to add a few more. But he also walks backwards. In order to flip him around, you just have this button. You just click on the character, and when you flip him, now he will walk in the correct direction. Of course, he's not positioned correctly for this image in particular. That's perspective, and we'll have a full training on perspective, so we'll not cover that now. That's about it for characters. We'll move to objects. Same with the characters. In objects, you can use our own objects. The difference is that you can actually upload different backgrounds as well. You can upload objects that are GIFs. GIFs, it's an animated um, moving uh, movie. So I'll just have one of those to show you. Sorry, wrong folder. Here it is. And I have here one. So we'll upload this one. It's called source. I'll call it dog because it's a dog put normal run because you might have another dog in there. It's uploading quite quickly. Now once um, again, you don't have to wait for those to happen. I usually put a few things to, to upload and then I 
upload them in the background and work on other stuff. While it's uploading, let's try to take uh, an object. So I'll take, so let's pick up an object. I'll pick this dog here, meanwhile. It's, an, uh, it's a cartoonish dog. And we'll put it here. Again, you can adjust the size of the dog. You can flip him around to face both ways. Now you'll see those two buttons to the foreground or to the background, and each one of them actually will bring uh, the dog one layer behind or one layer uh, forward. In order for us to understand that better, I'll just move move it a little bit backwards as a play, and I'll put the dog here. Now, if you'll play, you'll notice how the person passes behind the dog. If I'll click on the dog and I'll move it to the background, you'll notice that the person actually passes in front of the dog. So you can see his legs here. Uh, this is called working with layers and we'll cover layering in a whole new tutorial for you. In order to make an object move, very similar to making a character move, you have the keyframes. So we'll pick this keyframe, click on the dog, here and then click on the last one, play the dog just here. And now, sorry, I forgot to move backwards. And here is the dog moving along the, the screen. Of course, this is not a perfect animation for a dog as this dog doesn't walk, doesn't do nothing, it doesn't make a lot of sense. However, uh, the general idea is that you also can make, let's take this a word. Meanwhile, I will remove the, the person because I don't need him anymore. So this award, another keyframe that you can do is this keyframe as it is now. And then the last keyframe, we can make it much larger. What that will do, when we look at it, it will just make the whole thing grow over the screen and then disappear. In this case, the reason it does that, because if you look, right click on it, you'll see that the default effect for this one it's actually fade in, fade out. If we'll make it instant and we'll click play, you can see how it grows and then it will just disappear. So that's that's a few tips on, on objects. The next one that we're going to cover is text. In order for us to cover text, I'll actually change this image because it's a little bit... Oh, just before we move to text, let's see what happens. I think that our object already uploaded. So I uploaded earlier a dog, that's a GIF, uh, it's this guy here, I'll bring him in. It will take a little bit of time for him to upload because it needs to be processed, it's a, it's a moving image. Once that's done, you can see him here. And again, if you'll hit play, you can actually notice what he does. We'll not make him bounce, we'll make him instant. Now, because this is a GIF, you'll notice we have another um, option here, animation, and you have play it once or in a loop. So I'll put it in a loop and you can adjust now the speed of it. We'll leave it to one. We'll increase the size of that. Now, in order to make um, an object stay for longer or for shorter, the easiest way to do that, same with the character, same with everything else, if you go to the beginning or the end of this line here, you'll notice that your uh, mouse will change to arrow left and right. Left click and move it forward or backwards and that will adjust the size of that uh, thing. So you can make it for one second, ten seconds and so on. So here it is, it just stays there and does whatever it does. When you're using animation as GIFs, you'll not see any difference. When you're transforming a video into GIF, you will do notice differences because GIFs are limited to 156 colors. As a result, you'll have some granulation on it. We'll cover that in a whole tutorial when we'll convert videos to GIFs and we'll insert them inside Toonly. So that's, that's for that. It can be very helpful, especially if you want, for example, let's remove this award for a second. <clears throat> let's say I'll take is a GIF that I have, and now I'll increase the image size, over size it basically. We'll decrease the size in order to be able to see. So I'll make it like this, and I'll go 100%. Perfect. 
I have here a button that says save. I'll save my project for a second. It says save successfully and I'll click preview. And you can see it's just the whole screen. Now this is the way you'll be able to insert the video and make it as your background. As you remember, we couldn't upload videos for backgrounds. This is the way you can do that. So that's being done. Let's remove this puppy away. Don't remember his name. And let's change our background. We'll change it very quickly. Let's put this at the beginning and we'll put something easy like a blue chroma that I think that that's perfect. A uh, blue chroma where you see green chroma, those are actually one color screens and they're used in order to remove certain items in other software and blending them together. It's an advanced and uh, intermediate training and you can find already some uh, training based on this on our channel. Going to text, by default you have four, uh, five types of text. You have smooth text, sliding, mar uh, marching, joy, and spread. I'll bring all of them in front of you. So let's bring the smooth text first, then the slidey text. I just click on them and drag them over. That's all it is. They are all at the beginning because they'll be inserted wherever my timeline is. Spread me and join together. You'll notice that each one of them has a different length. And the reason for that is that each one of them have a little bit of a different animation. So let's see how they look. So you notice each one, it's a little bit different. Uh, the slidey one, it's just slidey. I don't know how even to describe it. Now, if you want to change the text, you just click on the text that you pick. Here on the top, it says content. Click the X, that will delete whatever text is inside and we'll call it test one. And that's smooth. You can change the font and you have quite a few fonts here. You have, I have four fonts. I do not really use Toonly for its text function. So I didn't upload a lot of fonts, but you can upload more fonts if you want to. So it will need to be a font type uh, file. You just open whatever font you want and you can upload them here. You can adjust the size of, the, uh, of that line, the font size that will not make a lot of difference. This is at the ending, this is at the beginning. Yeah. So if we make it 10 here, and I'll take this and move at the end, click on it. And at the end, I have it like this. And now we'll go back and play. The text literally grows. Uh, it's not a function that I like to use, but it's a good function in some uh, areas. <clears throat> then you have the special text settings. And here you have the color of the text, duration, in, duration, out, and the underlay opacity. If make this a little bit bigger so we can see what it is and we'll make them both the same so it doesn't grow or change. Perfect. So you can see now I actually have a background. Um, and if I bring this down, it will be semi opaque and so on. This is great to be used when you're trying to do subtitles or you want to put some text, but you want to distinguish it better from uh, its surroundings. Of course, you can change the color of uh, that underlay and the underlay padding. It's like a shadow <clears throat> that's applied to the text. It will be similar to each and every one of the text. Doesn't matter which one it is. You'll have the same options for them. Uh, a little bit different for the marching one, you'll have special text settings and those are the colors that the text actually uses. You notice that this text, uh, it's just changing the colors around. So that's quite nice. Uh, Spread me, you'll have just the color here. And Joy Together, of course, you'll have two colors because uh, the first word and the second word are different colors. So those are our texts and you can use them as you want. It's quite easy to do. Uh, again, you can resize them, uh, you can add keyframes to them if you need to at the beginning and the end. And in a different tutorial, we'll cover just text so it will be much easier for you to understand. Last but not least, we are going to cover audio. Uh, in order for me to cover audio, I want to specify a few things. When you look uh, on the left-hand side here, you'll notice that you have music and you have a mic. 
and it says default. Uh, this, if you click on this uh, arrow, you'll notice that in my case, I have a few options. Uh, those are the microphones that I actually have installed on my computer or that I'm using at the moment. I have the communication microphone, I have uh, my second microphone, and I have my third microphone. That's the one I'm talking now on, the boom microphone. And this will be great when you're trying to record your own voice for um, the videos. Music should go on the music channel. However, if you have a recorded voiceover and you do not want to use it as a lip sync option, you can put both of them in the music. Now, if you go to audios, of course, you can upload as many tracks as you want, but you have a bunch of tracks here. The one thing that I love the most about this function is that you have the play button. You can play it and you can hear uh, that particular uh, track. If you are happy with your track, you can just click on it, drag it down, and you'll notice that the two line music and default can be used for this. They're the only places where you can put it. You don't drag this to the, you can drag it to the screen as well. And if you drag it to the screen, it just goes automatically on the music. One. If I want, for example, this one uh, on the music and I have, let me see if I have something here uploaded by me, uh, train noise. Okay, we'll take train noise and I'll put that one in um, the microphone or mute voice where it calls now. Uh, this will be for the lip sync and this one will be uh, for the music. Let's see if we can add another one. You can see I can add another music track. I can add another um, lip sync or, or voice recording on that one. So you can add multiple recordings to those as well. Now, once you play them, you can actually hear both of them at the same time. If you click on it, you can adjust the volume. Make sure when you put the volume, don't put the volume of your music to 100%. Just put it a little bit lower usually, especially if you have voiceover. Uh, this is quite important because otherwise the viewer gets uh, distracted uh, from the explanation of the voice. Uh, usually the voice, I prefer to put it around 75% and the music at around 20 to 30%. Of course, you should listen to it and see how it sounds, if it sounds good or not. Ask for an opinion if you are not quite sure. Now, I'll just go quickly to characters and I'll bring in a character, doesn't matter which one, that I have those two tracks. And if I uh, right click on the character, I'll choose lip sync. You can actually type in here and it will show up. And you notice I have a new option that's called track. So I'll click here and you'll see that I have train noise. Of course, uh, this lady will not be able to, to lip sync a train noise. However, we'll try it. And let me increase the size of this animation. Now you notice that as soon as I have some noise here, she actually lip syncs with that noise. And that's, that's about it. Once you have all those done and you are ready with everything, uh, the next thing we're doing is to add another scene. So you have one scene done. Uh, I'll just remove those quickly from here because I want to show you also. We'll take a scene, a pre-made scene, just for the purposes of this tutorial. Office work doesn't matter. It's not important. We'll put the office work in place. Then I will, on the right hand side, I have here add new scene or I can use this button here. And you see, I have a new scene. I'll take the lab scene, I'll add it in. I'll just wait for it to upload quickly. And in between them, you'll notice that I have here an option that says select. This is for the transition in between the, uh, the two scenes. And I'll start with slide down. We'll have a tutorial that actually will cover every single aspect of how you should do your uh, transitions. Uh, when is recommended to use transition in Toonly itself or when is recommended to actually use a, an exterior software like DaVinci Resolve or um, uh, Apple's video editing software, any video editing software basically. To do those, uh, it gives you more freedom and much more creation uh, freedom on those. Now that I have those two scenes, I will just click preview. Uh, it will take a little bit for them to load because it's processing. Usually it will be one process and then another process uh, in order for them to work properly. So once they played once, 
waiting for all this to happen. Here it is. So now I can actually see those guys come, work, talk on the phone. The scene goes down and the other scene comes up. Uh, I'm not quite happy with that. So let's change that to slide up. It will be very similar. Again, hit the save button. Uh, at this point in time, you should hit the save button as often as possible. You'll never know when you're losing your work. And especially if you're working on a project that's 45 seconds and you have 100 objects and 300 characters that are doing all sorts of things, you do not want to lose those. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, basically what happened here is that this time the first scene actually went up and that one came from the bottom. Uh, we have slide left, slide right, and now you'll see the slide, yeah, it's just moved to the left hand side. Uh, slide right will be the opposite. We have 1982 lo loading, and that's very different. So let's see that one. It's preparing the transition now. And let's see how this transition looks like. So it's like a cubic effect. I don't know how to call it, but it's a nice transition. And the last one that's available, it's acid. Actually, I think they, they added a few more. Oh, yes, they added a lot more. They didn't used to have this many. So you'll need to go through each and every one of those transitions. I will go through to transition in a different uh, different tutorial. Uh, I see moving bars here. Let's see how that one looks. First, more, uh, more scenes you have, more transition you'll add. My suggestion is don't use more than two or three transition types per video because that can be disturbing. So that's the bars. Sliding book. There are all sorts of interesting transition to, to pass through. It depends on the project that you have and uh, what needs your project has in order to choose the right transition. This is one of my favorite, the book one. Uh, however, I prefer even more intricate transition, like ripple of papers and stuff like that. And I will have a tutorial done on transition and how to combine them in the right way. Now, once everything is done, once you save your project, the next thing you're going to do is export your project. You'll click the export button. You can change the name of your uh, video. And I have it prepared here. Make sure, from my experience, it's best to actually organize your folders so it's easy for you to find it. So this one, it will be an MPG4 save. <clears throat> the reason it says MPG4 is because of the format. I can change the aspect ratio. I can go all the way to 4K. I will stick to the 720p. Uh, that's 1280 over 720. Uh, quality maximum, of course, you can uh, get a low quality, a high quality, depending what you're using it for. My suggestion is stick to maximum is the best. And then you can choose the different type of um, file that you can export it to. You can export MP4, OGG, WebM, uh, and MKV. Again, uh, I prefer MP4. I use most of my videos to send to, to customers uh, in MP4, MP4, MP4 format, and they change it afterwards. Once you click continue, you'll see three lines here, video, audio, and total. Uh, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, some longer the, the animation, more objects that you have. It can take quite a bit of time. Uh, for me now, it's a little bit slower also because I have a lot of programs running in the background. Once that's done, we'll be ready to see the final product as it we saw it in the preview, and we can use it to for whatever we want. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel because once you get your hands and you get your grips on how to use the basics, you will be able to follow our other tutorials and enjoy them even more. Hope you had fun and see you next time.